I'd like to end today's press conference with the first of what will be a weekly update on my administration's vaccine distribution plan. We will also be sharing vaccine information this Friday on our biweekly local stakeholder call with county, city, and business leaders, as well as legislators and educators. Before I get into the specifics, I want to stress that we are still in the very early stages of vaccine production and deployment. And as happened early on in the pandemic, I anticipate information and guidelines will be amended and evolve rapidly. Since the start of the pandemic, I vowed that I would be straightforward and honest with the people of Kansas and that my administration would follow the guidelines of our scientists and public health experts. I understand the significance of what a widespread vaccination program will do for our health, our economy, and our schools, and I remain committed to transparency throughout the process. Now, in terms of the COVID-19 vaccine, here is what we know right now. COVID-19 vaccines produced by Pfizer and Moderna could be authorized for emergency use by the Food and Drug Administration uh, as soon as December 10th and December 14th, respectively. A third company, AstraZeneca, also has a vaccine in clinical trials, but no date for an emergency use authorization has been set. Kansas is estimated to receive 24,000 doses in our first shipment of the vaccine, which will come from Pfizer. This shipment could arrive in our state as soon as mid-December. While we are estimating the first shipment from Moderna will arrive shortly thereafter, and with shipments from both continuing to arrive on a weekly basis. In all, we're preparing for approximately 150,000 doses by the end of the month. My administration's vaccine distribution framework is in line with CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices recommendations. Importantly, the vaccine will be made available based on principles of maximizing benefit, minimizing harm, and striving for equity, justice, and fairness. The distribution order will begin with high-risk healthcare workers and nursing facility residents. Those will be phase one groups. Phase two, and, and I must also say that there will be others who will be added uh, to the phase one group as we're putting together this plan. Phase two will be those non-high risk who are 65 age, years of age or older. Phase three is the non-high risk under 65 years of age. We've created a timeline for vaccine distribution. Obviously, adherence to our timeline will be dependent on receiving the materials from the companies. We'll work to ensure that as many phase one groups as possible are vaccinated by the end of the month. Phase two and three will be administered the vaccine on a rolling basis between the winter and late spring. At the state level, the Kansas Department of Health and Environment is working with healthcare providers across the state to be ready to vaccinate Kansans when we receive the vaccine. More than 200 providers are in the process of signing up to distribute vaccines or have already signed up. This number is growing quickly and we expect it to continue to do so. These providers must meet certain licensing requirements, agree to the conditions set forth for administering the vaccine by the CDC, and must be able to provide certain key minimum data requirements. Vaccines will be delivered to pre-positioned locations equipped for ultra-cold storage throughout Kansas. Uh, the ultra-cold storage temperatures are required to store only the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, we'll be setting up other storage possibilities for Moderna. Uh, due to security reasons, we will not disclose the locations of these facilities. From these locations, vaccines will be distributed broadly to provide vaccine coverage to healthcare workers initially. We have laid our framework uh, to prioritize vaccine delivery to those on the front lines of our pandemic response or those disproportionately affected by the virus. With this schedule, we intend to protect the greatest number of Kansans, foster economic recovery, and get our kids back into our school buildings as quickly and safely as possible. The vaccines themselves will be free. However, vaccination providers are allowed to charge an administrative fee for giving the shot, but no one will be turned away if they cannot afford the administrative fee. I understand some Kansans may have hesitations about getting vaccinated. 
To date, the vaccines in trial have been tested on tens of thousands of people and have passed safe, safety requirements in both phase one and phase two trials. As an additional layer of checks and balances, an external advisory board made up of medical and research professionals using additional public health data will review final COVID-19 vaccine data. Lastly, I would like to remind everyone listening that we did not begin uh, manufacturing coronavirus vaccines at the outset of this pandemic. America's best medical and research professionals have been working for years on coronaviruses for things like SARS, which is also a coronavirus. If you remember at the beginning of this, this was called a novel coronavirus because it was different than SARS, but it's in the same family. Uh, the lessons learned through the developments with SARS uh, are being applied today, which probably what allowed uh, these companies to move at warp speed uh, to develop these uh, vaccines. Before I take questions, I want to reiterate that this news of an upcoming vaccine does not mean we should take our foot off the gas. We must continue to encourage widespread testing, wear face coverings, and employ other mitigation strategies. Listen to advice from our public health experts on the local, state, and national levels. We have seen what can happen when these common sense mitigation efforts are not appropriately followed. For example, due to increasing case numbers and hospitalizations in Cedric County, this week, Wichita Public Schools, our largest district, announced that all elementary school students will be returning to remote learning. If we as a state commit to following public health guidelines, we can keep this from happening statewide and we can ensure our Wichita public school kids that they can return to in-person classes. Mm -hmm. 